What is going on, everybody? Solomon here. Happy New Year to all of you. I want to hop right in. I've got tons of information to get into today. We've got Bob Way talking about the XRP uh, rhetoric that's been spread about regarding buyback. We have uh, kind of additional thoughts from John Deaton about the case. Uh, we have HBAR. We have just tons and tons and tons of content in here. I wanted to start with this. This is Jim Dolbear from Elixir. And uh, obviously, there's you know Elixir, there's XX Network, there's the foundation. Um, talking about privacy and kind of this this internal power struggle going on between uh, the powers that be uh, and how digital cash certainly um, needs to be represented in a private way as well for economic growth. So I thought it was re really interesting. So I'm going to play this uh, and then we'll move on. I just want to share very quickly. David took me to one of the, maybe the largest currency printer. So they are the secure printer of currencies for like dozens of countries around the world. They're the people who actually print the fiat cash. And I learned that there's something called the International Currency Association. And I learned that there's a lot of older men in pinstripe suits who believe in privacy. And the reason they believe in privacy is that real cash, first in fiat and now in digital cash, is critical to economic growth. And they believe that the societies and that the, the, and this is the job of central banks and, you know, the better part of government in healthy countries and even not in unhealthy countries is to grow the economy, to be economically successful. There is a power struggle in the legacy world between the security people in government who are worrying about terrorism and the other branches of government who are worrying about economic growth. And they know that without true digital cash, without privacy, there will be a real hit to pay from eco for economic growth. Always economic growth wins in the long run. But in the press and in the media and in the FUD, the terrorism and the security apparatus wins. So there's a battle royale going on here. And it's critical to us as the XX Network to win the privacy thing, to do our part. And a lot of what David has been doing is trying to make sure that people understand that privacy is a good thing when it comes to having frictionless cash and economic growth. And if we win that battle, XX Network is really in good place. And David's winning in Zurich. So I just wanted to make that connection. I thought it was a really interesting um, discussion point. So if you guys want to learn more about XX Network, certainly go to xx.network. Uh, all the documentation is on here. Now, he mentioned International Currency Association, which I hadn't heard of until um, he had brought that up. And doing a quick dig, uh, you can see Future of Money Central Bank Digital Currency. Now, this is the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Um, hadn't seen this before. But there's tons of uh, submissions in here. You can even, you know, you can see Ripple's submission as well uh, for the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Talking about um, XRP Ledger, talking about a private, the CBDC private ledger, which I believe is a federated side chain. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, moving forward. All right. So I saw this tweet from BitBoy in a few years when you buy the Lamborghini you always wanted. People are going to tell you that your success is just because you got lucky. These are the times you will remember as you laugh and say, yeah, you're right, because they will never understand the depths of crypto winter. Um, I agree with most of what he's saying, but I don't necessarily agree with like, you know, and everybody's different. You know, for me, it's never been about a Lambo or a bigger house or any of these things. It's about situation changing um, cycle to cycle because uh, you always hear like life changing money, all this type of stuff, you know, um, for me, if you know a measure of success that I have, w w will try to use, like I tried to use during the previous cycle, and I'll try to use during this next one, is just to make small situation changing moments. Like I'm not planning to get rich in any cycle. I mean, if that happens, that'd be fantastic. But for me, it's more about debt free. It's about you know not having necessarily like obligations into the traditional system. I mean, you're always going to have them to an extent. But, you know, even if that for an individual is paying off a car loan or if it's, you know, paying off a good chunk in their house or doing whatever, um, you know, I would much rather be looking at ways to, to sustain myself without buying things, more things that put me into more debt um, than the other way around. But yes, he is correct here. Um, they are, there are going to be multiple people stating that you're lucky um, when this market does turn around if you're just here. 
Uh, you can look at where we've been at in the past. These are, you know, every candle here is a six month candle. This is the total market cap of all of crypto. This takes us back to 2014. You can see two six month red candles in a row. That was pretty much the bear market. You can see 2018 um, all the way out into, you know, the beginning of 2019, we had another two six month candles. So about a year. Uh, interestingly enough, you know, and I understand there's a lot of macroeconomic stuff going on right now. I'm not saying that, you know, the bottom is already in. I think I, I was saying that I thought the bottom was in back in June or July of last year, which goes how much to show that I know. Um, but again, we do see kind of, you know, two six month red candles in a row again. Now, if the economy as a whole worldwide, you know, takes a gigantic shit, I can't imagine that crypto just comes in and immediately saves the day. But at some point, I do believe that the traditional system is going to pivot based on all the facts that we've seen for years at this point in time into kind of this digital economy, crypto and DLT and blockchain being at the heart of it. Just interesting to see where we're at timing wise. It'll be really uh, fun to kind of watch, hopefully fun to watch these next six months and not uh, a lot more drastic pain. Obviously, we do potentially have more room to go downward as well. Um, I would like to think that we're closer to, if, if we haven't bottomed, that we're closer to a bottom than um, than anything else. So, you know, if we do have a little bit more pain, hopefully it's nothing crazy. Um, John Deaton here uh, being quoted in an article, and I felt like I should read it to you guys. He's saying this is a pretty accurate uh, article compared to some of the others that, uh, that have allegedly quoted me. Um, and it's this article right here. It's uh, through Crypto News. Ripple settlement with SEC unlikely, says Deaton. He put out a poll. Will the case settle um, after 18,000 votes? The poll showed 59% of people believe that a settlement will happen. 59% uh, is higher than he would have guessed. A year ago, uh, John believed settlement was likely because the SEC wouldn't want the Hinman emails made public. The lawyer supports his position uh, in being uh, of the 39% who answered the poll that they will get a decision by Judge Torres uh, with these three arguments. Uh, first and foremost, despite previously being that the desire to keep the Hinman documents private would force the SEC to seek a settlement, Deaton now believes that the SEC is prepared for these documents to go public. The lawyer argues that while the draft documents of the controversial 2018 speech may indicate malicious SEC intent, it is unlikely that it will have significant bearing on the court's summary judgment decision. Uh, Deaton now believes that there is no mention of XRP in the controversial documents. Secondly, he argues that the SEC chair who is Gary Gensler, may currently be willing to take on the risk of an unfavorable outcome for the SEC in summary judgment, as the Commodities Futures Trading Commission is also pushing to regu uh, regulate crypto markets. Uh, and the uh, CFTC and the SEC are back and forth battling um, to see who's going to you know, take, take hold of certain aspects within, uh, within regulatory clarity for crypto. Uh, finally, Deaton says that the ruling in the library case and the collapse of FTX are likely to have emboldened the SEC the lawyer has reiterated his prediction that the SEC will soon file a lawsuit against a crypto exchange. All right. Massive news coming out of Alliance Block as well. This is a past year recap. I was going to read through this all for you guys, but there is way too much here from social growth to the next era digital ID protocol um, with meta NFTs um, all the way down to funders staking going live uh, funders on mainnet first capital raising going live through Dua and Bonk. DAO, uh, trustless identity, identity verification. Um, yeah, and I, and I understand like a lot of people complain about price action with Alliance Block. Um, but if you really look at all of the utility that, the, that they're building out, um, it's been pretty massive. So congratulations to Rashid, to um, Matai, to uh, Amber, uh, to uh, all the leadership at Alliance Block. Uh, if you guys want to read through this, it is there is tons and tons and tons of information in this thread. Um, all right. I wanted to mention also, this is live. So this is the guide to Series 65. Now, you know, you see all the private equity aspects by Ripple shares, by X, Y, and Z, um, and all of kind of the benchmarks for being an accredited investor. Um, now, this Series 65 doesn't automatically make you an accredited investor. Uh, what essentially would happen if you were to uh, take and pass this is, let me find it here. You know, what can you do with a Series 65 license? Holding a Series 65 enables candidates to either be one of the following, an investment advisor representative, um, which would enable you to provide clients with advice on securities and investments, Secur securities investments such as stocks, bonds, mutual bonds, et cetera, 
financial advisor, educate clients on money and savings management, share his valuable information to gain financial literacy and independence. Furthermore, those that hold a Series 65 license can also qualify as accredited investors if they are in good standing. This certification enables them to angel invest in high growth startups and participate in angel list syndicates, among other opportunities. So uh, th this type of a course normally with uh, the materials needed um, can get costly. Uh, now, we're not paying for people to actually take take the test uh, through the, like the FINRA exam, but we are you know, facilitating all of the content that should get you there. Um, I'm doing this uh, alongside the 600 plus people that are already signed up to do this. Um, it is the, the base version of the course is totally free. Um, kind of over exceeded the expectations with how many people signed up. I know that we're going to do a classroom environment through Zoom and they like max you out at 500 people. So we have to figure out the best way to do it. Um, maybe we will have something for certain individuals that want more hands-on engagement. Um, but this is very hands-on even at the onset of this. So if you look at the lesson dashboard, um, pretty much have lesson one, two, three, four. This is month one. So weekly, you have a you know a weekly quiz within this as well. You got definitions, um, pretty much leading you through the entire course. And <clears throat> like I said, classroom environment, communication board, um, opportunity for sponsors for some of the firms out there that might want to get involved and hopefully have a little bit of a talent pool. And hopefully we can provide um, individuals in this space and community a way to empower themselves without all the financial red tape that comes along with these types of things normally. Uh, excited about it. There's been a ton of signups. Go in and learn more. Um, there's an introductory form. There's, there's tons and tons and tons of information here. So average salary for financial advisor, exam requirements, um, the amount of RIAs or registered investment advisors in the States, 14,806. Um, and I believe there are thousands upon thousands of businesses in the United States. That's a really small number, by the way, like less than 15,000 people. So um, like, like I said before, investment advisor, representative financial advisor. Uh, Tokenize are putting out a really awesome tweet uh, with tons and tons of good follows. If you are on Twitter, if you're interested in Constellation, Quants, Zinfin, um, or XTC Network is what it's called now, um, Morpheus, Energy Web, Casper, Alliance Block, HBAR, Algorand, LF0, XRP, um, LCX. Uh, if you're interested in mind maps, if you're interested in, you know, uh, alpha uh, or, you know, <laughs> newer news, these are a bunch of good follows. This XX dude is 100% a great follow. Um, he just recently put out cheat sheets again, I think. Uh, I'm not going to be able to find it right now. Yeah, all these cheat sheets for all of the uh, different networks that we all, you know, pay attention to. Proof of reputable observation, constellation. Um, also, you've got the hypergraph uh, transfer protocol through Constellation and DAG. So, all right, uh, moving forward a little bit here. This I told you guys this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, but there's a ton of content over the past week or two. Uh, digital ID, uh, which we've been talking about for you know well over a year on this channel. Um, Turkey to use blockchain-based digital ID for online public services. We also have a New Finland uh, and Labrador government hoping to launch a digital ID product or project in 2023. Moving back towards Hedera here, LG Art Lab, uh, as the markets continue to work out inner details of FTX collapse, HBAR has had volatile mo uh, movements as projects continue to build on top of Hedera. LG, yes, this is LG Electronics or LG Art Lab, certainly building on Hedera. And this is kind of the uh, account. So this is Coinman, the HBarbarian, another great follow. Um, Posting this, so this is app.metrica.co. You can see a ton of network overview aspects within Hedera. And if you look at accounts created, um, let me see if it's year to date. So this is putting us into 2023. Uh, there's There was a massive, massive uptick of accounts created just in the, in the past day. So, I mean, what you would normally see versus... I mean, here's what you would normally see for throughout like the year. And then it literally just it skyrocketed up, you know. Um, let me do the year. This is also interesting. So transaction volume and TPS. So I, this was in November. I think this is when Atma.io and Avery Dennison were testing um, TPS. So this is like, when I say transactions per second, this was actually what was occurring per second on Hedera. It's not what it's capable of, obviously. 
Uh, but yeah, accounts, massive. You can see this is all of like last year, basically. And then you can see just January 1st and 2nd. So 108,427 accounts created. Um, I don't think that it has to do with this Lithos thing. I know Coinman said he thinks it has to do with Lithos. Lithos is pretty cool, though. It's a AAA gaming studio. Like, if you've ever heard of The Last of Us or Days Gone on PlayStation, I mean, they were massive titles, and these guys moved um, outside of, like, the traditional kind of gaming aspects. They're building this on Hedera as well. Pretty cool trailer here. They sold the Origin NFTs, like, months ago. Um these guys are hard to get in contact to and talk with as well, by the way, but this is a cool trailer. I'll play it for a sec. I think this is gonna be the comic that releases. AAA games take years to build. I'm guessing that their game, Ashfall, is not gonna be coming out for another few years, but still pretty cool. Um, again, kind of uh, globally, World Bank partners uh, launch tracking systems to clean up carbon markets. Um, we're going to see more of that, more of the kind of green initiative, green economy, ESG type stuff coming out, certainly within this decade. Um, and they're, they're already working to tokenize, you know, the carbon markets. Uh, Hedera's doing that quite a bit as well through, um, oh shoot, I'm going to forget the name. It starts with a D. Um, okay. All right. Moving towards like the XRPL. This is Kai with on XRP. Now, if you're not aware, BitHomp is a great resource. Uh, it makes me unbelievably proud. Past 7 million XRP already. We'll continue to improve and make the platform better. So this is NFT sales volume by, let's say, marketplaces or brokers. Um, and this is what it looks like live right now. So on XRP has had 22,304 sales, uh, over 7 million XRP in volume, which is cool. Um, now, I be you can go down to month, day, week. All this is all time, um, so it's still super new and nascent. Like obviously XLS twenty with NFTs on the XRP ledger. Uh, XRP Cafe Cafe is a great site as well. Um, a lot of projects are having their claims and mints through XRP Cafe. Uh, Xmart NFT Master uh, are great as well. XP Market, I believe. I don't think I don't know if I tried that out. But I've tried on XRP, XRP Cafe, XMart, and NFT Master. I mean, these these guys are all building. Uh, but you can see like sales count here um, on XRP. You know, doing a great job. Uh, and XRP Cafe, all these guys doing a great job. But you know, it's pretty cool to watch because this is just the beginning of kind of NFTs on the XRP ledger. So, uh, and last but not least, uh, you do have kind of Bob Way chiming in on the buyback aspect. So, uh, the buyback was proposed by. XYZ. His argument was a fraud but was a fraud by inducement. That is, if you have a house with some gold in the backyard, but the government didn't tell you there was gold and bought it from you on the cheap, you are entitled to more compensation. Thoughts? Bob's saying maybe that's true, but he's not a lawyer. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. Question mark. Why would the government or anyone want to buy all the XRP? They would be back in Ripple's 2012 situation. And then Bob also saying, um, from some random executive summary in my feed talking about a quote unquote buyback of XRP. Uh, I just don't see why anyone would, anyone would want to buy back all XRP. Doesn't make sense. Wouldn't you just go to GitHub, grab everything and start over? He's essentially like referring to like what Stellar did by like quote unquote, I guess, I don't know if it's forking. It's like, it's basically like a copy of the, of the XRP ledger. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's interesting to watch the narratives um, that a lot of people have been, spreading about kind of this stuff and hey you know whatever happens happens i'm not the end all be all either you know but i just to, to like for for the fed to buy back xrp and then to use it in some way means that they would have to redistribute it and rebuild every you know all the aspects of utility um i just uh, none of it really makes sense to me at all let alone the fact that the xrp ledger is like decentralized that's kind of the whole point um so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, there was a ton of information in here and I hope you guys had a, a, you know, a happy holiday. Um, maybe a little bit rusty sounding in this video, but I haven't done one for like two weeks, but looking forward to try to do these way more consistently this year. One of my resolutions for 2023 is really to, um, regardless, just give my opinion on stuff, you know, hopefully on a daily basis, probably not going to be twice a day. I don't know if I'll ever be that guy, but, um, I try to do it as much as possible for you guys. So um, I'll talk to you guys when I talk to you. Thanks. Happy New Year. Bye.